So a discussion over the last couple of days has been about Xbox Game Pass. It's not really a new discussion, but it was the debate as to whether Game Pass is good or bad for the gaming industry. It's something that people have been talking about really since the launch of it, but really ramped up after the launch of the Xbox Series X and S and the industry seeing Xbox was doing a lot better than they were doing during the Xbox One. They were succeeding. People were subscribing. There were incredible games coming into the service, both first party and third party. And the question keeps coming up as to whether it is good for games, bad for games. Are they able to make money off of this? And this all came up again this week when there was a bunch of articles published about a part within the CMA provisional findings looking at the fact that Xbox or Microsoft admitted that it does cannibalize sales a year after the games have been launched into Xbox Game Pass, which just makes a ton of sense, right? You put a game into the service, it's going to take away some buy to play sales from people who see this and would rather go ahead and subscribe. But it doesn't mean that it is bad for gaming, it is bad for the industry, as there's still a ton of revenue that these games do make. And at the end of the day, it's what Xbox needs to do in order to grow Game Pass, get bigger games into the service day and date. So people subscribe, grows the ecosystem, and then they have more money to be able to get more games into the service. But one of the things people continuously go back to is Descenders. Now, Descenders was a game from Mike Rose's studio, No More Robots, and it was one that he came out after it was in Game Pass and said this. If I take the month before we went into Game Pass and compare it to the sales of the game last week, we're now selling around five times as many units each week as pre-Game Pass. And this is something that we've talked about and we've seen statistics on it presented by Microsoft, presented from developers and publishers like Mike Rose's studio that you put a game into Game Pass, people who never heard of this game discover it, then they go out and they buy the game or they spend money within the game. And everybody here makes money because of Xbox Game Pass. And now Mike Rose has come out again and tweeted about this and says, every time Game Pass is in the news, my Descenders search fills with mentions as people on both sides try to explain why Descenders is proof of their own claim about Game Pass. And every single time, oh boy, do I learn that gamers do not understand how video games work at all. All I can say is, we're aiming to get every single title we publish from now on onto Game Pass. In doing so, we'll secure success for each title and relieve immense pressure for the devs, but please, gamers continue to explain why it's bad for us. And there you go, coming out confirming that putting games in the Game Pass is good, takes off a lot of pressure from developers, and I would say probably also from the marketing side of things where you have this massive upfront payment that you're receiving just to get your game into Game Pass. You don't have to worry about it being successful through sales. You don't have to worry about a lot of the marketing because a lot of the risk is taken away when you make that deal with Xbox Game Pass. And then the return on that isn't just that you take away the risk, people are now discovering your game that probably wouldn't have played it and probably wouldn't have discovered it because Game Pass has, I think it's like almost 30 million subscribers now, which opens it up to just an instantly huge base of players to go and check out your work. So I think honestly, the debate is ridiculous and people are continuously trying to make Game Pass out to be something that hurts video games. When you see examples like this, clearly it doesn't. Now there's gonna be certain games where Game Pass it's there's no point for a game to go into the service like massive big third-party games like hogwarts legacy that are just selling like crazy and they don't have any need for people to go out and try to discover their games everyone knew about this game when it was released could it have helped them maybe they get an extra upfront payment where they get this huge amount of money from microsoft put it into game pass and they're still going to be selling copies of their games across all these different platforms including xbox maybe it would have just been more money and maybe at the end of the day if you did the comparison between the two maybe they would have made more money if they were to put a game like that into game pass i'm not sure but i think the overall net value of game pass is more positive than negative and until playstation starts putting their big first party games into their service day and date people are still going to fight against this and try to pretend like it's bad for the service because PlayStation is telling people that, hey, we got to do this virtuous cycle or it's going to hurt gaming. It's going to hurt the quality of our product. We're going to we're continuing to see Xbox put their first party games into the service day and date. And people are still going to go out and buy these games, especially on PC. I mean, look at Forza Horizon 5, how many people bought that game on Steam. And PlayStation, in fact, is actually inching closer as we speak to doing what Xbox is gonna be doing because they know they need to grow their subscription service and they need to grow 
their ecosystem to be able to continue to compete in the future. Right now, their strategy is working, but I think, like I've said multiple times in my videos, it's going to be way different in about five, 10 years from now. And we have this. Actually, I'll pull up their actual tweet here. They announced their more PlayStation Plus games coming to their catalog in February. And we have a big one here, Horizon Forbidden West, which obviously was a massive first party game for PlayStation that released last year in February. So it's been a year since re its release, but it is coming in to PlayStation Plus. So this is, I think, signs as place of what PlayStation strategy is. They know to revitalize these games, you put them into the subscription service, it will get more people signing up to PlayStation Plus who haven't played it yet. And they aren't against putting in their first party games into a subscription service, but they're just gonna do it a year later. And I think this is eventually gonna change to six months later. And then at some point it's going to be day and date. I think they're, that's why this is occurring now. Right now they don't need to do a day and date, but eventually they will. And, and when we see stuff like this, these are all signs, I think pointing to the future of what PlayStation is going to be doing. So as soon as PlayStation starts doing it, six months, three months, day and date, you're gonna see the entire narrative about whether it's bad for gaming, it hurts the quality of games, just be completely, absolutely destroyed. And PlayStation gamers are gonna to continue to celebrate subscription. Whereas right now, they like to always make it seem like it is bad for the industry. So th that's just, I guess, a quick update on the stuff going around with the CMA, Micros clarified that every game they have coming out, they're gonna to try to get it onto Game Pass because it, it's good for the titles that they are making, takes pressure off of the devs. And like you said here, they sold five times as many units after the game was in Game Pass compared to before the game was in the service. But I'm gonna leave that there, guys. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know what you think about Mike Rose's comments. And let me know what you think about this for Horizon Forbidden West coming into PlayStation Plus in February. Do you think this is signs of future first party games coming in to the service, maybe a year after or maybe a shorter time after, depending on how well they sell? That's probably gonna be a big thing as well. So thank you guys for watching. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next video.